uh, and uh, we're talking about the Siena poll, which was done, and how it would affect uh, seniors and uh, those that are plus 50, 50 plus. Uh, Beth, good morning. Thanks for coming on. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So where are we, uh, you know, I mean, we can look at this presidential race in so many different ways and tie it into so many different things. But how, uh, in this case, uh, how, which is, which, which do seniors prefer, baby boomers, which do they prefer in terms of candidates for this race? Well, uh, we didn't actually ask them which they preferred. What we asked was among a number of questions about being prepared for retirement. We asked a number of questions about protecting Social Security. And in one of those questions, uh, we asked who would do a better job in protecting Social Security. Got it. And, in fact, there was a 20-point spread both among boomers and among Gen Xers. So um, who do uh, so who would boomers uh, say? Baby so boomers. Both, um, both boomers and Gen Xers said that they felt that Clinton would do a better job on Social Security. Oh, on interesting. Social Security. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess I, I, I'm, you think of Democrats as being those that are big on services, right? So maybe that's the reason for that. Um, I don't know. Um, I don't know because we yeah. didn't really delve it. You know, this was a overall survey that was looking at middle class retirement. Got it. And what we see it as, um, you know, the middle class squeeze, and they're feeling it in so many ways. Ninety percent of both the boomers and the Gen Xers are telling us that they haven't saved enough for retirement, and they know it's going to be a significant problem. Yeah. And that's why, you know, among other things, we have to talk about Social Security, since it is one of the most important factors in somebody's retirement. Yeah. And, um, you know, we here at AARP know that the um, trustees of the uh, Social Security Trust Fund have made it clear to us that in 2034, the trust fund will run dry. And at that point, it will only be able to pay out 75 cents on the dollar. And so that's why it's so important that the electorate uh, ask the candidates specifically where they stand on how they're going to solve the Social Security issue. Nobody wants to take a 25% cut in their Social Security benefit. They've paid into the system for uh, their whole working lives, and they had a promise from the government it was going to be there. And it sounds far away, but it's 18 years away. It's not far away from me, and <laughs> I'm right. counting on it, and I'm counting on it for my kids and my grandkids. Yeah, uh, and I got to tell you, I, I if, uh, I'm 51, and I'd like you to stop sending me these applications, because <laughs> how do you deal with people like me who feel that there's a, I, I, it's uh, that there's some sort of a negative connotation to retirement, and uh, they're almost offended if you uh, at the if they're in their 50s. I'll give you an example. Um, we had sent out, I worked on a campaign a few years back and we'd sent out uh, letters to senior citizens and, um, uh, the, when they wrote the letter, they wrote it, dear senior, one woman was so offended because she was only 58 years old, Ooh. so offended by it, called up, said she'd never vote for this guy because of it. How do you deal with bringing the, my crowd in to, to being accepting of taking that 10% discount for a cup of coffee? You know, the uh, the nomenclature is definitely a problem. Actually, our CEO, uh, Joanne Jenkins, just wrote a book called Disrupt Aging and looking at the bias among all age groups, and it's really fascinating yeah. how, how biased we all are. But, you know, I work for ARP because I believe so strongly in our social mission, and I think the Social Security and Take a Stand campaign is very typical of why, you know, there are so many committed members, 38 million across the country, and 2.6 million right here in New York. And when it comes to protecting your uh, future, and if you're 50, you better be on track to be yeah. saving for your future. And so you can't have a stronger advocacy organization working with you and for you than AARP. And so I would say the $16 a year is a, a small price to pay to know that you're going to have retirement security because we are going to fight <laughs> right. you know, as strong as possible with our 38 million members to make sure that Social Security will be totally solvent and there for you, your children, and your grandchildren. Me- so. meanwhile, meanwhile, I was fighting with a woman at the diner trying to give me a 10% off, and I said, no, keep your 10%. <laughs> I am offended that you would think that I could get 10% off. Um, all right, well, listen, you talk about saving. How many, uh, and I know this was had to be part of uh, your, your question uh, in your survey, uh, in terms of how are people 50-plus seniors 
Um, how are, are they worried about uh, their future, their finances in the future? Are they feeling that they might not quite be there when it comes to where they want to be in oh, retirement? There's no question about it. Uh, four in ten feel that they are lagging behind in retirement preparation. Yeah. Four out of five have never sat down and written a plan or figured out a budget. I mean, think about it. How are you ever going to retire <laughs> if you don't sit down and figure out your finances? Of sure. What, what's going to come in and what you're going to pay out. And if only 20% of the people that we surveyed, both of Gen Xers and Boomers, both said they had ever literally even taken pen to paper. I mean, that's unbelievable. And so there's no way that they're ever going to be able to figure it out. And they, they can't just, you know, live in Egypt in that river right. of denial, right? Well, and this is a different... <laughs> <laughs> that's where I'm living currently. Uh, there, is, There is a difference, though. I mean, baby boomers, many have the luxury of, uh, of retirement. Um, uh, that is going away. You're, the uh, the younger generations will not have the benefits that our parents had uh, when it comes to retirement. I think that's absolutely true. Uh, you see it less in the boomer generation, too, and we know it's going to be even that much harder for Gen X and uh, millennials. And it's interesting you bring that up because part of this research is also about uh, how people are able to save for their retirement uh, and what we know is that three and a half million New Yorkers do not have access to retirement savings in the workplace. And if people can save in the workplace where it automatically comes out of your paycheck uh, right, every right. week or every two mm-hmm. weeks, people are 15 times more likely to save for retirement. And we just don't have that as much as we used to. So can you imagine there are, what, 19 million New Yorkers and three and a half million of them do not have access to a um, retirement savings plan at work. So yeah, right yeah. now we've been working with New York State government, uh, the Cuomo administration, to see if we could get a state-facilitated savings program, um, which a number of other states have just passed recently. And we're so pleased because the governor has put together a smart commission to look at this and figure out how the government can uh, facilitate this savings program so that small companies that really want to do right by their employees but yeah, yeah. don't want to take on the fiduciary responsibility, you know, and are concerned about administrative costs, they wouldn't have to worry about that. So we're really excited about it. We hope we're going to hear big good news about yeah. a New York State uh, facilitated retirement savings well, plan. Beth, when you talk about people never putting pen to paper, uh, I, I'm one of those, although I'm in my mid-30s. If you are going to retire... You're also one that's not ever going to have a retirement in radio. No, <laughs> oh, I know that. We don't get it, that. If you're planning to retire, let's say you're like Bill's age, you're Thanks. 50, yeah. you're 50, and you're mm-hmm. going to, you plan to retire in 10 years, and you were going to live for 20 years, how much money should you have saved up? I know there's a lot of factors that go into this, but is there like a a general number that if you were going to live 20 years after retirement, it'd be a million, or is it 500,000, or is it 10 million? What is it? You know, I, there really is not a number that I'm aware of. I think it varies for everyone, which goes back to the point of how important it is to put pen to paper. Yeah. If you go on AARP's website, aarp.org, uh, there's mm-hmm. a tool and there are a calculator that can help you assess how much you will need for retirement. Uh, and by the way, there's also one in there for health care costs. So here, I'm going to throw this question out to you guys. Do you guys know how much it's going to cost you a month uh, when you retire to pay for your health care costs that Medicare will not cover for you? Do you have any idea? I have no idea. Yeah, but at this um, rate, it's going to be $4 million <laughs> a month yeah. probably. Yeah. It's at, well, before was a correct digit. It's 476 Dollars for a household of two, mm. they will have to pay out every month for health care costs that are not going to be covered by Medicare. Wow. Most people assume that Medicare will pay for everything, and it will not. And so people have to put that into their calculations, or they're going to definitely have a shortfall. Yeah. Uh, quickly, uh, do you uh, does AARP endorse, uh, for instance, in this presidential race? We never endorse for a candidate. We come out on the issues that we believe are the most important to the 50-plus and their families. And we put out questions that we hope that they will ask their candidates. For this year, it's very important that the presidential candidates actually take a stand and lead the way on what their vision is going to be because it's got to get fixed. We hope it'll get fixed the first year because whoever wins this, there's a good chance it's going to be the start of an eight-year administration. And if history is correct, the first year of any administration is usually the most productive. So we're really hoping they get out there and they 
And then after that, it tanks, uh, unfortunately. So uh, could you imagine if AARP did endorse this year? How many people would be canceling their uh, their because it's so polarized this year? Yeah, well, Maybe I will we never, never do I'm, that I'm on done. any yeah. level for any yeah, any candidate, can. local, uh, state, sure. or federal. Smart, we never ever do that. Okay, all right. Well, listen. Uh, thank you so much, Beth, for thank coming you. on. We'll okay. talk again. Take care. Right. Bye bye.